Thank you so much for being here today, Monica. I've been looking forward to uh, hearing your story. I know we've been planning to have you on for a little while now. So thank you for making some time with us today. Um, and I know you know uh, Ladiana, so I'm uh, I'm glad that you uh, you know we're supporting her post, sharing the work we're doing at the community. I really appreciate that. Yes, thank you so much, Imra, for having me. It was a good surprise when I heard uh, when I learned about your podcast. You're doing a great job, as I said before. So thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, you have great guests, so uh, oh. <laughs> I'm here to share my journey too. I hope it helps. Yeah, then for sure, I saw Ladiana's uh, podcast. So it was a great interview. She is amazing. She is working in uh, a partner organization and uh, she, she had this incredible journey as a newcomer herself, right? Exactly. And that's that's really where I like to start every episode is just learning about each person's journey and, you know, what's led you to where you are today in your role. So um, if you don't mind, the first question I'd like to ask is is just about that. You know, how did you get to where you are today? What kind of things have you done along the way to end up in the role that you have now? Of course, my pleasure to share my story. You know, I think I believe in communication, information, education, as I said to you earlier, it's it's all about my career as well. So I'm originally from Brazil. I got here in 2020, like two, three weeks before pandemic. I got oh. here for good, I, I mean. I, I was here before for a short training period. And my husband came first. So it's like a, it's a unusual story for many newcomers. Uh, so it took me a while to decide to come here for good because of course, all my employment journey back in Brazil. So back home, I was working as a professor. Uh, I was a federal public servant back in Brazil because in Brazil we have this uh, public universities. It was like uh, my career goal and I, I could achieve that uh, earlier than I expected. So I was pretty happy there teaching for over six years and I took my bachelor's, master's and PhD there. Also, I had a one semester uh, of, we call PhD sandwich in Denmark. It's like an internship um, just to learn about the Scandinavian theories around communication and technology. And, you know, that caught my attention. Maybe I should learn more about this planet, this world, this all this cultural diversity and communication we could have, right? But I would never imagine I would be myself an immigrant. Now I am Canadian too. I'm like a Brazilian Canadian. I recently uh, got my citizenship here. Congratulations. So, uh, thank you. Yeah, it's been a, a great journey because when I first got here, like for good, uh, I I was aware I need to improve my English skills because it, it is the main point, you know. I started to learn English, like uh, like dedicate myself to learn English when I was 25. Oh. Let's say 18 well. years ago, 18 years ago. So now um I I can notice all my improvements throughout these years, you know, but it was a really hard time when I got here. And then pandemic started. It was it it was a great challenge, you know, a huge challenge, uh, because everything was going to to close. And then I was thinking, okay, I need to improve my English. I was eager to learn, you know, about this uh, cultural diversity here, because also back in Brazil, one of my research uh, was about cultural diversity, uh, understanding. Uh, cultural identities and also understanding uh, media audiences specifically how the, the cultural diversity in audience can um, make difference uh, in understanding the media content you know how people uh, take internet uh, for themselves how they elaborate that content how they can uh, create content about that so it was like I, I was pretty curious about how was the cultural diversity in Canada. So I was eager to learn. And then, a long story short, I decided, OK, if everything is going to close soon, maybe grocery store is still there. And then, you know, I just thought maybe the best place to learn about culture while improving my English skills, while learning about Canadian workplace culture. And then I just. Uh, went to a grocery store nearby when we, we, we used to live uh, downtown in Ottawa. And then I just dropped off my resume and I 
I got a call from the manager and the manager said, would you be available for a quick interview? Yes, for sure. Wow. And then I was so excited, you know, uh, while I was practicing my English, I was excited to, to get this first opportunity. Absolutely. That's very brave too. Yeah, it's brave too. You know, some people, uh, of course, they said, oh my gosh, Monica, you are a PhD. What are you doing here? You know, we have this huge challenge in Canada, not only in Canada, but I believe in all countries where receiving immigrants, we have this employment challenge to seek uh, a job, to seek employment in something commensurate what we used to do back home, right? Yeah. But to be honest, I was pretty excited and grateful for that opportunity because I need to improve my English skills. And I did tell you, the first foreign language I learned back in Brazil, it was Italian because I am like a fourth generation of Italian immigrants back in Brazil from the south of Brazil. So it was really hard for me. It was like a self challenge to speak fluent. I could never imagine I could be talking to you right now as I'm doing right now, you know? So uh, th this is great because it's one example. We can learn, we can learn anything in our life basically if you are willing to learn i definitely agree with that yes so after i'm i'm mentioning this first job in canada because there i was a client of this organization i'm currently working for oh so, you know i was so eager to learn about diversity then uh, my manager at that time just reached out to me and said you know we have this uh, non, -for non for profit organization reaching out to us and they want to deliver a workplace language training. And at that time, so I started as a cashier, then I was promoted to supervisor and then a front end manager. Oh, and I then see. I engage some members of my team to attend this workplace language training classes to learn English, uh, focus on consumer, ser customer services. And you know, to, they were teaching us what we should talk in a small, Conversation, small talk conversation, you know, how to break the ice without, you know, overcoming these barriers, these cultural yes. barriers, respecting uh, privacy and so on. And that was amazing. So I learned about the season when I'm working for right now. And then I, I met a person who a few years after would be my manager at the season. So you know how networking yeah. can, can happen, you know? So uh, when I, I used to say, when I I'm meeting a new newcomer, a new newcomer, a newcomer or a new friend here, you know. Just go ahead. If you need to go for a transitional job first, try something in your in your field. For me, as I was working in communication and public relations back in Brazil, that would make sense, you know, working with customer service here. And then uh, make the most of that experience. So I start building my networking yeah. in a grocery store. And that was amazing during pandemic, you know? So I'm so grateful for my journey because uh, it, it it happened so naturally. I was not aware at that time, but I was aware I need to reach out to people to understand this country. And then, yeah, after a few years, while uh, I was um, hiring manager, hiring manager, I mean, I was participating in the hire, hiring process for front front end team at that grocery store. I had this opportunity to interview people to learn about more labor market challenges for employment. And I noticed I want to learn more about that. Then I took the HR program here. I, I have many uh, many details uh, between this, uh, among these years, you know, and I got pregnant. I had my first son here wow. during that experience uh, in, in that employment. And then also I was, uh, you know, curious to know about maternity leave, all this employment um, rights and duties, you know, all the employment law. And then during my um, maternity leave, one year maternity leave, which is great. I, at some point I was eager to learn something new, you know, eager to come back to my professional life. And then I said, oh, you know what? I will leverage on technology, of course. So I take some online courses. And then I took some HR uh, program online and I ended up doing um, uh, in-person, uh, attending in-person um, graduation um, program, HRM in Agonkin College. And it was great wow. because I learned a lot about the labor market and that like 
uh, it matches with my background and my interest in learn more about cultural diverse here, you know? And that it led me to the job I have right now as a mentor recruiter liaison at the CISO, where I, I'm helping uh, newcomers in their employment journey, finding and recruiting, engaging, liaising with mentors. Uh, career mentors to support them. So these mentors are professionals with experience in Ottawa or in Canada, depending on the program, and they will support voluntarily a newcomer. So you have you have these great resources um, in Canada. We can leverage on technology, and this is amazing. So this is in not a so nutshell, but it's is a summary of my journey, right? Oh my goodness, Monica. That's why I love asking this question. That is so impressive. Uh, grazie mille for, for sharing grazie, that with grazie. me. Grazie, <laughs> well, you, you know Italian very good. Uh, yeah. Piccolo. I'm, I'm <laughs> learning Italian as well. I'm actually going to be visiting Italy uh, next month. So nice. I've, been, oh. I've been trying to learn Italian as well. Enjoy, enjoy your trip. You know, it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I just thought that that's so interesting that you mentioned that. Uh, and it's so impressive what you've done in such a short period of time. The pandemic was not that long ago mm -hmm. um, to come here and have the attitude that, yes, you have a Ph.D., but what's wrong with working in a in a grocery store and, and learning by doing and immersing yourself um, in an environment where you can learn about the skill you're trying to develop? I think that's such a practical approach. Uh in a couple different ways. It's a it's a great approach to building your English speaking skills, like you said, and you speak very well, um, in my opinion. It's a work and... in progress, you know, <laughs> the lifetime journey. I'm aware of that, but I'm really proud of, you know, my accent, my life. Oh. I used to be embarrassed. You know, this is another point. It's important to be proud about our roots, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I mentioned that to job seekers all the time. Many worry that they speak English with an accent. And that it it's a problem. And from all the employers I've spoken to, it's actually something that makes you unique and memorable um, and potentially even more relatable to some of their clients and customers yeah. because everyone's got a bit of a unique backstory. Yes. So I agree. It's absolutely something to be proud of. Um, and I think especially for newcomers, stories like this are helpful because they're very practical. Um, a lot of times we hear advice like you need to network, but it's a daunting task. It's it's hard to know how to network. And I think something that stood out for me about your story is that I think you approached it the way that networking should be approached. It's not just about what's in it for you. You mentioned that you were a client um, of uh, Osiso. Am I pronouncing it? Yes, yes, right. And when that opportunity came up to uh, let others know about the training programs, you know, the people you're working with, you let them know, hey, there's this, this program, we can all learn together. And, you know, I can see how OCISO would have appreciated that. I can see how the workplace would have appreciated that and how that creates, you know, this sense of um, connection between people. And I think that's the best kind of networking. So it's such a great example. Of course, um, of course, of course. So thank you for sharing that. I think for those listening, I, I hope newcomers are watching your episode um, and can take some, some things away from that part of the story, because I think it's very helpful to know, hey, th this is a, this is what you can actually do. Um, yes. Now, like you said, there's a lot of changes that have happened over these past few years in the way different workplaces operate and Career services is no different. So have yeah. you noticed any changes over the past couple of years with how career services um, help clients, the strategies that they recommend? Have you noticed any changes over the past couple of years in your field? Yes, I believe, you know, after pandemic, maybe before, but as I, I started my life here, like during pandemic, uh, I'm not sure about before pandemic, but here I'm sure pandemic... Um, opened open the possibilities to network so yes. nowadays back in brazil uh, linkedin was not that important but uh -huh. here linkedin is a great tool you know to improve your skills either linkedin learning you can you can go through linkedin learning for free through the ottawa 
uh, public library, and each city, each city may have a program with the public library, you know, where you can leverage on this possibility, on this technology, and take some online courses for free. You can upskill yourself. You can reskill yourself. You can learn how to navigate all, all the challenges you may face. And this is amazing. So I think technology is a key point here. Of course, we have a great discussion about AI pros and cons, but for sure we can, with a sense, with a good sense, take advantage of that and improve our possibilities, our employability, our skills, just leveraging, you know, taking taking advantage of that, seizing that opportunity. And for example, many um, employment services nowadays are delivered online. So, you know, you can save time, you can save money, and of course, in person, maybe better for some people, but may not be possible for many people. For example, I'm a mother myself, you know, I can imagine many uh, newcomers, they, they come here uh, with a family, so it's a lot to manage. If you can save time in commuting, it's, it's, it's just uh, already a, a great start, you know? You can have a conversation, you can have a job interview. We are doing this online. Probably you are based in Toronto or United States, I'm not sure. Yes, so, Toronto. you know, yeah, you, you are doing this and this is amazing. So many years ago, when I started researching, I, I, I always um, was passionate about technology, but a few years, um, back in this history you know it was everything was new we we didn't uh, have many possibilities as we have now so now if i have any question i can put on google i can put on any ai i can have some insight of course doesn't mean that we that like be set in stone you need to understand the, the source of that information we need to have knowledge to understand if that is right that is wrong but it's amazing because you can we can do mock interviews online. You can, and this is this. It will help you a lot in preparation. So the, the main thing, I think, uh, a newcomer, I face myself, and I can see my friends facing. We have great talents coming to Canada. We have great talents here, but at some point, we'll just second guessing ourselves because it's not our country. Even though now I'm a Canadian, I'm starting to to feel as a Canadian, but I will always be Brazilian, you know? And so a part of me will be always connected with my past and I can just second guess myself. Am I good enough? Am I ready enough for this? Of course I am. Of course I'm ready to start something, but I, I need also to realize, and I like the role plays dynamic, you know, activities, strategies, because we can, we can think about others people position you know just think about an employer imagine back home you are living in a country of immigrants you are an employer you are receiving immigrants who are applying for a job at your company how would you hire them which kind of criteria you 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 uh, like observe on them to hire them first of all of course they need to trust you they need to trust your ability to, to be a good person and, of course, a good worker. And for that, sometimes uh, no one will speak for you here because no one knows you. So we need to we need to speak for ourselves. We need to show ourselves. So we need to learn how to do that in a best way in the Canadian workplace culture. You need to do that in a best way uh, to be seen to be hurt because of course whoever is coming here have a great career because uh, have a great knowledge it's just a matter of adjusting the culture and to translate that in something that will catch the attention the employer's attention the recruiter attention and for that technology can be our best friend because when you just got here we don't have a networking so we can start networking and learning different tips, strategies, advice from others who posted online or uh, from, from AI, from many articles, from experts, you know, just read, read everything and then you'll make your conclusions. Of course, we need to balance pros and cons and be careful. But you know, some years ago, we didn't have all this. And now yeah. this is, of course, the, the, the best thing you can take advantage of because 
we can learn and then prepare ourselves. So the best way to be confident is to learn, is to have this confidence that you have enough information and information is key. And this is why we have many organizations who are supporting uh, people here. This is why you can have many good sources online to get information and leverage technology to make, to, to grow, to improve your networking, you know, your connections. You can send a cold message on LinkedIn, invite people, you know, ask them some specific questions. Uh, but for that specifically, I would say, just be careful. You are leveraging on technology, but be careful because for example, back home, we have this, Cultural differences is a sign of respect asking about someone's family, someone's Boy. religion, whatever. Uh. But here, we need to be careful. This is a private issue. I mentioned about some parts of my private life because I wanted to. But sometimes right. people don't want to. So you don't need to show that in a job interview. You don't need to ask that. You should not. You must not ask that to mm. another person. You know, this is a key point in networking. Just be careful. Uh, when leverage technology to network, you know, be careful, just stick with professional um, subjects and questions. And, and then for sure, you have some uh, good advice. People are usually willing to help. So we can, we can leverage on that. That is super helpful, Monica. And again, I, I truly hope that newcomers use some of this advice. And I think it's the advice they're looking for because those are concerns, right? And and concerns that might not have crossed their mind yet because they're new here and they're they're doing things the way they know back home. But every every environment, every country has its own way of doing things. And as you become aware of it, you know, you, you can more easily connect with the people of this culture um, without losing your own. Right. So I, I think it's just such a, a helpful point to make there. And it's why it's, it's, you know, it's why we're talking today because, you know, I sent you a message and, yeah. you know, that's how you get to have these kinds of great conversations. So I couldn't agree more that those messages, if done correctly, can lead to some amazing opportunities like the one I have with you today. Um, and the other thing I'll say is that uh, it's, it's the reason I'm trying to bring awareness uh, mm -hmm. about organizations like, um, Osiso, for instance, where you can meet mentors and people can guide you and tell you things like the Ottawa Library has LinkedIn learning licenses. That's not something I even knew. Yeah. So what a valuable thing. We'll make sure to include that in the comments uh, and yes. in our description so people absolutely. can find it. Yes, um, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, I, I got a great mentors in my life here in this short period in Canada. Uh, I got mentors from the HR association. And then oh. I just was passionate about mentorship because they helped me a lot. They didn't find me a job, but they gave me a lot of resources to find a job myself. They support me with information, with emotional support, with guidance, with information regarding the workplace here in Canada. This is why I believe in mentorship. And as I used to work back in Brazil as a professor, like, Working for people development is part of my life. And I hope I can, I, this is my goal. Keep working for people development, you know? No matter if in the educational, education uh, organization or you know, for profit or whatever. In my life, it's like a part of who I am. Uh, so it's pretty important to be aware about this. And mentorship is one of the resources. When you are asking for help, can be from um, a non-for-profit organization here, such as Ocizo, can be just a cold, me cold message for someone, to someone you admire, you know? Invite them to a coffee chat, invite them to ask, ask permission, of course, ask if they would be able to uh, answer some of your questions, ask advice, ask for guidance. And then this person may end up being your mentor. So it's just about asking for help, no matter which kind of help. And a mentor can guide. I think um, everybody, you know, needs a mentor because it's important to learn from others. It, this is amazing. The, the, the job you are doing here with this podcast is amazing because we can learn from others, hearing people's stories. And then it can save us time, energy, as I said. That can change our life, can save our time, and time is precious, especially when it, when we are like um, reorganizing our professional life, right? 
Oh, well, I, I appreciate you saying that. And it's, it's, um, it's, I feel lucky that I get to do it and get to talk to so many interesting people and share their stories. Cause I agree. I think we learn so much from each other yes. and um, it's, it's little things, you know, like it's how you're saying leveraging technology to be able to make these connections, but also hearing things like, you know, you dropped off your resume at the grocery store right. and hearing exactly. that, you know, you could do something small like that, that could lead to so many new opportunities. So um, I think that's encouraging as well. I, I agree. I think you can do so much using the technology that's available to you. And if you combine that with a resource like a mentor, mm -hmm. um, especially, you know, if you're in the Ottawa area, I would recommend checking out um, Osiso because, uh, you know, Monica is speaking to it firsthand, uh, the impact it's played in your life. Yes. Uh, then you can really start to see some interesting things happen because you have someone you can ask questions to. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, that that's, again, what I appreciate about the opportunity to speak today uh, with you, Monica. And I know we're we're almost out of time. I mean, yes, these conversations right? always go too <laughs> fast. So I mentioned this before we started recording today, but I hope you'll come back in the future to, um, you know, continue to share your insights and guidance uh, we would love to have you back here. I have so many more questions to ask you, um, but uh, I do appreciate the time you spent with us today. And, and we'll certainly put information about um, the services you spoke about in the description for those who want to learn more. But are there any other details you would like to share about the program or how to get in touch and learn more about the work yes, you're doing? Of course, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn, of course. And uh, I would highlight also we have IRCC in Canada, right? It's Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada. is a the federal government uh, department who support newcomer. And so they, with frequency, they share a lot of resources. We can search by postal code throughout, you know, across the country. And then you can find the best um, uh, service to support you as a newcomer. And this is amazing. You know, we, again, leveraging on technology. And of course, you need to learn yourself. I think as a, as a final message, I would say, we need to learn ourselves. Some some people, they prefer this, this uh, building report in person. So just go to, to any website who is, you know, uh, advertising these meetups. You know, you can find people in person networking with people from your um, your field. Also, you can think only your even your landlord in Canada, whoever is coming here, uh, probably will have a landlord, right? So this person can be a, a reference to you. You can ask them for help. You know, like a a personal reference. So you can always seize the opportunity. You you need to respect everyone's story because they may help you. May they may have a friend of friend of friend who needs some money in your company, in your field. We never know, just respect, you know, no matter the degree, the background, the the, um, the nationality, you know, we are all here to support one another because Canada needs immigrants. And yes. then just be, be yourself, but your be the best version of yourself. I think this is important, you know, you need to upskill, reskill, we need to improve our strengths, but our our weaknesses, I mean, but also we need to learn the best way to show our qualities, our background. And to be confident, we need to have enough information. Asking for help is the first thing in this journey. Yeah. Thank All you right. so much, Imra. You know, I'm I'm learning a lot from your podcast. So I'm happy to help. I'm really glad to hear that. And thank you so much again for being here. I think that's a great message to leave people with. Um, and I truly hope you'll come back in the future to, uh, Absolutely. to join us again, Monica. Talk again, no problem. Yes. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you again. Goodbye for now. Adios. Arrivederci. Thank you. Arrivederci. <laughs> bye -bye. I hope you have thank an awesome you. weekend and we'll, we'll hopefully talk to you again soon. You too. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks Take again, care. Monica. Bye.